Hello, John Bloodworth Gentleman Crafter here with another episode of Adventures in Machine Embroidery. This week, using the Hatch Embroidery Digitising software, I have come up with this very tropical flamingo sunset design. And I wanted to take you through some of the steps that I used to create it. Uh, and then hopefully at the end I shall show you the stitched result. In fact, not hopefully, I definitely will show you the stitched result. Okay, so let's dig in. Um, I'm going to basically come back to this a few times through this demonstration, but let's start a new design. And the first thing that I'll need to do is import the artwork that I used for the Flamingo. I got this actually as an SVG file from the Creative Fabrica store. And I will, of course, leave a link below the video in the description on YouTube and in my uh, blog post that accompanies this but basically I purchased this and downloaded it at the moment there's an Easter promo I don't know when you'll be watching this video but the full regular price is a dollar anyway so very affordable now it was in an SVG format so I did have to convert it to another image format first but once I'd done that I can basically select it and then bring it into uh, the design now this basically is going to be the, the core of the design, so that's my flamingo. Normally I'd go about just you know image tracing it, however with a single colour silhouette like this I can actually go to the auto digitise settings and choose auto digitise instant embroidery and it basically then creates uh, a tatami fill for me all ready to go, which is perfect, I don't have to do anything to it other than probably change the colour, which I'll do right now. Now for the actual sun itself, again very simple using the digitising tools. I just grab the circle tool, set the fill. I'm going to leave it on tatami fill for now, uh, and then I'll choose the colour, which I'm going to go for this bright yellow to start with. I plot the centre point by left clicking, drag out the circle until I'm happy with the sizing I'll go about there and then press enter twice to set that in place a couple of quick changes to this though uh, I'm going to keep the tatami stitch I'm going to change the spacing to let's say around there I'm going to keep travel on edge I'll keep the length as it is in effects, I'm going to go to radial fill and set this to be, let's say 0.38. So if I zoom in here, that's given me quite a spaced out design. Because the yellow is not going to be one of the prominent colors, I just wanted to make sure that I had the stitching in there, but I didn't want to overly um, fill that area with stitching. You'll see why in a minute. Okay, the next job is to create the next circle of the sun. So in actual fact, I'm going to select this object and then just press Control D. That will give me the next iteration. It will duplicate it. I'm going to go to one of the corner nodes, click and hold down the Shift key and just reduce it in size a little bit. I'll then change the colour to orange and then I'm going to change a couple of the other settings uh, this one I'm going to drop down as well just there's slightly more orange so I've still got that radial fill at applied now next up I want to create the red of the sun the setting sun or the rising sun whichever so again I'm going to press Control and D here I'm going to leave it the same size but I will change the color to red now for this one what I would like to do is turn off the radial fill but turn on the gradient fill and I'm going to change the minimum spacing and also the maximum spacing and 
then in the fill properties, I'm going to reduce that. So hopefully, now, um, 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 one other thing is I'm going to turn off all of the underlay stitches and you can see how now that's graduated, but I want to turn it so that that graduation runs from the top. There we go. So you can sort of see the graduation as it goes up the design. Now I want to move the flamingo so he's on top of the selection. And I also want to move those circles so they're further up. So I've selected all three and I'm just pressing the arrow key on the keyboard until his body kind of sits in the center of the sun and his head and tail are both in but his feet are slightly um, outside of that sun area. Hope that makes sense. Okay, for the background blobs, I'm going to use the freehand closed shape tool and create a random um, blob shape. Like that. Now, I will change the color right now, and also what I'm going to do is actually get rid of quite a few of these nodes, so that I'm left with maybe four or five forming the overall shape. And the reason I'm doing this is because it then helps the shape form um, very nice curves. Maybe I should have left that one in. How about getting rid of this one? Yep. Okay. Oops. Oh, got a weird one there. Okay, I think I'll leave it like that. Now, for the fill, I want to change this from Tatami to Ripple. And I think those settings should be around about OK. For the second copy, all I'm going to do is Control D to duplicate and then use the mirror key to flip that over. Resize it a little bit. Let's say there. And also if I click on this shape again, I get the ability to just freehand rotate it as well. Now with this one, I think I might stretch it to make it just a little bit bigger in both directions. Move it over. And maybe rotate it a little bit. And then if I select both, I can bring those into the middle, roughly. Uh, now, obviously, they need to be at the top of the stack, because they'll need to go first. So that's those in. And looks like we're getting there. Let's just compare this to the original. So this one was slightly bigger overall. Let's stretch that like this. And let's bring that forward. I think maybe I need to just rotate this one a little bit. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now, um, we still have a couple of things to do if we want to, and that's basically this additional stitching around the flamingo. I gave it this because it's kind of that light halo effect that you would get around a silhouetted shape. So, we've got a couple of things to do for that. Uh, oh, before I do that though, actually, for the flamingo itself, I'd like to apply the Florentine effect, and that just gives the stitching a little bit of direction, uh, which just gives the picture a little bit, a little bit more interest. Um, and I think I want to change the stitch spacing as well, just a little bit. Uh, yeah, not much, just a little. 
because I'm going to remove the overlap for all these things anyway. So I don't, I'm not too worried about stitch density here. Now that I have the flamingo selected, I can go ahead and go into the create layouts toolbox, go down to create outlines and offsets. First, I'm going to create the object outline, which is going to be, let's say a backstitch with the pink color and click OK. So now we have that. Next up, I reselect the original flamingo and again go into create outlines and offsets. Turn off outlines, turn on offsets. And I've set it to 0 0.025 inches as the offset and a count of two and colored it red with a single run. Now that's put me two lines of red. Actually, what I would like to do is convert one of those. It's getting me confusing here. I wonder if turn no, that didn't help. Let's hide all of this stuff. Okay, that's slightly better. So if I turn off true view, I should be able to see which lines I'm selecting. So I want the outside lines to be orange. Those two. Oh, I need the bit in between the legs as well. Orange, please. Thank you. Okay, how's that looking? So pink, red, orange. Yes, so it's basically fading out into the lighter colors. Let's bring everything else back and see where we're at. So let's compare it to the original. Mm -hmm. Oops, dear. Okay, so we've got the blue background, we've got the graduated sun, we've got the um, directional stitching and the outlines. And in the actual design that I've just created, hmm, one thing I'm going to change is on this yellow layer, I'm going to turn off travel on edge. And that just gives the outline here a little bit more um, ragginess. I'm not sure what I'm trying to say. Uh, but if I also go into stitching and turn off the underlays, you'll see it just kind of leaves this almost like halo effect. I think I'm happy with that. Wonder if that looks better. Yes. Okay. I think we'll leave it at that. Oh dear. I'm not doing very well with this zooming thing, am I? Right. There we go. Okay. So um, I think next what I'm going to do is just make sure my color palette matches what I've got in my thread box. So. I've obviously got the thread colors loaded and I'm just going to work through each of the parts. Oh, actually, I need to move the black flamingo just up here. Yep. Okay. So basically what I'll do now is run through all the colors in my toolbox and change the colors by typing in the code up here and then selecting the color down here. So I'll give you a couple of examples, but I won't make you sit through all of it. So for the, oh dear, I'm actually, I'm literally rummaging through my box of threads. So for the blue, I'm gonna go for this color. Now on screen, it doesn't always come out exactly the same as it would in real life. But even looking at it as I am doing now, I'm thinking perhaps actually it might be better if I went for a slightly darker shade. Okay, I think I'll go with that one. It should look... Hmm. Hmm. 
No, I'm going to go back to the previous one. <coughs> These are the choices we have to make. Okay, so I'll put that to one side. Now I need a nice bright yellow. So let's go for... that one. Then I'm actually going to probably use a very, very rich and vibrant orange for the next shape. Doesn't quite look like that on the screen, but trust me. And then for the red, I'm going to go for quite a dark red. Again, not quite representative on screen. Now the orange parts I need to bring together. Oops, not above the circle. And that means I will have one, two, three. So these oranges are the same as the ones that I used earlier. These two reds will be the same as I used earlier. They are actually down here, so I could just click on them, which is probably a lot easier. Um, now, the one color that's distinct from the rest of the color palette is this bright pink, uh, which I think we will go with that. Hopefully that will stand out sufficiently and also blend in either way. Um, now for this flamingo, not sure I wanted to go intense black, but it will probably end up being that way as I don't necessarily have the kind of gray that I wanted. Although this does say dark gray, it looks pitch black in real life. Uh, okay. So I think, oh, I did actually sit and make you go through it all. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, why have we got two different oranges? Oh, it's because they're probably in different orders. That's fine. Right, so I shall get that over to the embroidery machine, stitch it out, and then we'll take a look. Now I did make a couple of extra changes, um, mostly to do with removing overlaps to reduce stitch density. And then what I did is I ran it through the stitch player just to check the sequencing and how things would lay out. And so far so good. I love the radial design of that sun. And then the graduated effect works really well. And there's the flamingo. And here we go. One thing I did notice after I'd stitched out is I've given him a pair of socks with that um, extra outline. That would be easy enough to edit out. That's not a problem. But other than that, I am super happy with how everything worked on this one. And I hope you've enjoyed it and perhaps picked up a couple of tips along the way. Do remember to give the video a thumbs up if you can, please. And of course, subscribe to the channel. In the meantime, thanks for watching.